How's it going everybody? My name is Shelby Ryan and today I'm going to be teaching you how to draw a simple spinner toy in Fusion 360. Uh, so to begin, a spinner toy is just a simple thing you, you kind of fiddle with, fidget with it. It's really fun and it's also a fairly simple part to start drawing and, and getting into 3D modeling. So this is the current one we're going to be drawing today. It's a super simple one but you can take this uh, this model and you can modify it to however you want. You can customize it, add logos, whatever you want to do, but this will be just a getting started tutorial. So what you're going to do is head in the description and you're going to want to first download Fusion 360. So if you're a student, you can go over to this link here. This will be the first link in the description. And this is for students. You get three years of Fusion 360 for free. Uh, all you have to do is create an account, register and download, and you're good to go. Uh, it's really good software, super easy to use, and... Uh, it's a great way to get into 3D modeling and 3D printing. If you're not a student, it's fairly affordable. I would say it's a little pricey, but it's $300 a year, and this will be the second link in the description. Um, compared to SolidWorks or other 3D modeling softwares, $300 per year is fairly cheap. So there's a couple different ways you can get Fusion 360. But once you have it, you can launch it like any other software. Uh, it'll probably be on your desktop when you first install it. You can double click the shortcut or you can go down to your Windows tab and search Fusion 360 and if you can spell it right, <laughs> uh, it should pop right up. Uh, you can also put it down here on your kind of quick access uh, bar if you want. Uh, I have mine right down here next to a couple other 3D modeling softwares but we're going to launch it and you can see it loads right up. It's fairly uh, fast and it should run on pretty much any computer you throw at it so uh, performance wise you don't need a very powerful computer to run it but while this is loading let's take a look at our uh, technical drawing so once again this will be the third link in the description below you can download it and it's just a very simple technical drawing of a spinner toy so this is going to be the one that we start drawing and looking at it we can see there's four circles they're all 0.86 inches in diameter, and this little circle with a dash through it represents diameter. And we can see it's just, uh, it looks like it's a bunch of concentric circles, possibly rotated around a center axis, and there's some stylized curves added in. So overall, this is going to be too bad, but I think Fusion 360 is loaded up, so let's get started. So this is what Fusion 360 will look like when you first launch it. You can see up here we have our units, so I have mine set to inches. Um, this, uh, this technical drawing is in inches, so I would recommend staying in inches. Uh, but you could change it to millimeters or whatever um, that you're wanting to use. So up here is our toolbars. So we're mostly going to be doing sketch and create for this tutorial, but in future tutorials you might see us use some more of the advanced tools. <laughs> But under the sketch tab, you can see we have all of our basic shapes that we can draw. And then under the create tab, these are all of the, um, I would say, modifiers of a, of a sketch. It lets you, say, go from a 2D drawing to a 3D object um, with the extrude tool. Or if you want to cut a hole in something, you can do an extrude cut. Um, so we'll touch on extrude in this tutorial, but I would recommend learning more about some of the other tools that are useful in this software. And then this 3D space here is our drawing plane. So you can see we have all three axes, X, Y, and Z, that we can draw in. And when we click on the sketch tab, it'll tell us what plane we want to start on. So we're going to head up here to sketch, and we're going to select a circle. And for this case, we want a center diameter circle. So when you first start a sketch, it's going to ask you, do you want it on the front plane, side plane, or top plane? doesn't really matter to be completely honest, but we're going to start on the top plane just for ease of use. So click down here and you can see it'll automatically go basically to the normal vector. So you're looking straight down on that plane. So this is going to be our origin right here and that's where everything kind of starts from. So we're going to place a center circle right at the origin and to place a circle you simply click move your mouse and then click again and you will create as many circles as you want <laughs> and the way that I draw I find it to be the most easy is I kinda get a rough guess and then I come in with 
uh, dimension tool and start defining how big or small certain aspects of the drawing should be. So you can see we really only want this one circle so I need to delete some of these other ones. So my current tool is the circle tool so to exit we're just going to hit escape a couple times. So now you can see I just have a mouse. So we need to delete some of these other ones so I'm going to click on them and press the delete key. So that's pretty easy so if you ever mess up Escape is your best friend because that'll get you back to your select tool. And then if you mess up a, a feature or something like that, just select it and press delete. So you can see now we have a circle, but there's nothing defining how big or small it is. So we need to tell it to be, according to our drawing, 0.86 inches in diameter. So under the sketch tab, we're going to go all the way down to sketch dimension. And you can see our tool changed. We now have like two lines and, and a little arrow in between them. And because I already had our circle selected, it already selected it. But I'm going to exit out and show you one more time. So sketch all the way down, sketch dimension. You can also press D on your keyboard. So to dimension a circle, all you have to do is click the arc, like the outer uh, circumference of our circle. And then once you click it, you get this little uh, kind of line with a number attached to it. So all you need to do is click one more time and you'll place the dimension down and then we can add in our actual value, so 0.86. So you can see <laughs> it shrunk it all the way down because it was about 10 inches in diameter. Now we're good to go, so it's at 0.86. If I try to move it, I can't really move it. It's stuck at 0.86. But the cool part about the dimension is, say in the future we want to come, we get a bigger bearing or something like that, we can come right here, double click it, and add um, values to it. So if we wanted to go up or down in size, we can do it super easily. And this is why it's called a parametric modeling software. So 0.86 is going to be our final one. And then looking at the picture again, it looks like there's an offset of 0.15 all around. So we have a handy tool called Offset Entities. Um, but first we need to make our our like reference circle. So I'm going to come up here, draw another center diameter circle straight up from the origin, so on the screen line. And then using the like relations tools, which are right over here, we're going to select this circle, press and hold shift, and then select the bottom circle. So now we have these options down here on the right, and we're going to set them equal to each other. So this kind of saves us time. We don't have to dimension everything, but if I change this to one inch, it's going to change that one to one inch. Because chances are you're going to want the same size hole for every single one. So I'm going to change that back to 0.86, and then I'm going to offset this upper circle. So if you select it, we're going to go to Sketch, and all the way down, Offset. You can also press O on your keyboard, and you can see Right now the offset is really small, 0.039 inches. According to our technical drawing, it looks like it's going to be 0.15. So we're going to come over here and type in 0.15. And if you ever want to modify this in the future, just like the dimension tool, you can double click this and add in a new value. But for this case, we're going to do 0.15. So now that we're, we're getting uh, fairly close here, I know it looks kind of... <laughs> like we're really far from the actual finished part but all we need to do is rotate this circle and this kind of outer ring three times so we could come in and draw it but there's a really nice tool called circular pattern so if you go under sketch and come all the way down there's a circular pattern tool so we can see here it says select your objects so we're gonna select our circle and our inner circle and then the center point is gonna be our origin so right here. So you can see we are now rotating this around the center axis. We can say add four if we wanted four of them. Uh, or if we wanted to, <laughs> we could add uh, three or two, however many you want to do. So I'll do this one more time. Objects. And then select our center point right down here. And then we're going to, by default, add three because we want three holes. So now, this is cool, if I move this one out, or move it around, you can see it moves all three of them. So we want this one to be vertical. So once again, using those sketch relations, we're going to select the center point here, 
and the center point of our circle. And we have a nice horizontal vertical tool. So now this one is tied vertical to our center circle. And then to recenter, always just click this top button. This is looking really good so far. So now we need to tell it how far apart our circles are. If we make the spinner too big, we won't be able to spin it in our hands. So looking at the drawing, it looks like it's 1.25 inches from the center to the center. So that's pretty easy to do. We'll go under sketch, dimension tool, or once again, you can press D on your keyboard. We'll select the center point and then the center point. Nope, sometimes it glitches out, but we'll do, we'll do this one more time. This time we're gonna try the arc. So we'll click the circumference of our circle, circumference of our circle. There we go. <laughs> and just like the dimension tool earlier, we're gonna place it uh, somewhere else to the side. And this value is going to be 1.25, but you can see how easy it would be if we wanted to make it bigger, say 1.5 or smaller, 1 inch. Um, but for this case, we're going to go 1.25. So it's looking really close to our final one. All we need now is these kind of stylized curves. And I think you may have kept caught on to how I'm drawing this, but I'm only going to do one and then circular pattern it all the way around. So if we under, head under sketch and go to the arc tab, we want a three point arc. So we're gonna click somewhere on this circle and then somewhere on this circle and then I'm just gonna place an arc. So we don't want our arc to look like that. We want it to look like this roughly. So I'm gonna click it over here and then I'm gonna exit the arc tool. So now using the sketch relations, we're gonna make this circle tangent to both this one and this one. So I'm gonna select our arc hold shift and then select our circle and now underneath here we have a tangent tool so you can see now this arc is tangent to the circle now we need to tell it that this point belongs on that line so you can either drag it onto or you once again press the point hold shift press our arc and come on down to coincident so now that that point is stuck somewhere on that circle uh, but we need to do this to the other side now so I'm going to select the arc, press and hold shift, select our circle, and then once again click tangent. So now our arc is fully defined. We can still kind of play with it because we haven't set the distance. But looking at our sketch, it's either 0.15 if you go the minimum distance or once again 1.25 if you go the full distance. So I'm going to go under sketch, sketch dimension, and select this arc and this arc and this is going to be 1.25 inches. So you can see now I can't move it. I can try to drag it around, but it is stuck in place. And we're just going to rotate that two more times around. So I'm going to go to sketch, circular pattern, select this curve, and then select our center point, and make sure you have three selected, and we're going to click OK. So you can see that's our basic profile of our spinner toy. But the only issue is, is it's uh, it's 2D, it's completely flat. Like we want to be able to really use this or print it off. So we need to give it a third dimension and that's where the create tool comes in. So under the create tab, we're going to select extrude. You can also press E on your keyboard. So the first thing that we want is to select the profile. So we're going to click up here and then this guy and this guy and this guy. Oh. And looking at our drawing, it looks like it's going to be 0.28 inches tall. So I'm um, going to come down here to distance and say 0.28. And you can see we now have created a 3D model. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. If we click up here to the home button, it'll kind of recenter us so we can kind of get a full effect of what we just drew. So to save this part for future modification, we're going to head over here, click save, and I'm just going to call this spinner workshop. And we'll click save. Now we're also going to get this ready for 3D printing as well. So a 3D printer requires what's called an STL file. And to do this, all you need to do is head over to the make tab, select the model, and then we don't want to send it to a print utility. We just want to output it. So we're going to click OK. And then I'm going to put this to my desktop. So spinner 
uh, workshop and you can see STL file is selected so uh, that's basically it we've made a part that's ready for 3d printing um, we can come in we can modify it we can change the shape and the size of some of the holes stuff like that um, that's about it I hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions please leave a comment below and I'll be happy to help you out thanks for watching and have a nice day